The next question posed is by Junaid, India, but living in Kuwait. If a medical doctor gives some medical advice which is contrary to the advice from our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what will we have to do? I ask this question because my wife, she's pregnant, has been advised by the gynecologist to lay down by directing towards her left side in order for the baby to have blood circulation. But I heard that in Islam, sleeping by pointing towards our right side is sunnah. Could you please educate me, sir? As far as if a doctor gives you advice, which is contrary to the teachings of Islam, teachings of Allah, or teachings of the Prophet, what should you do? Basically, in Islam, there are five categories of things. One is which is fard, which is compulsory. One which is mustahab, as we say, sunnah, which is recommended. The third is mubah, that is permissible, optional. And the fourth is makru, that is discouraged. And the fifth is haram, which is prohibited. When you do what is fard, if you do it, you get plus point. If you don't do it, you get negative points. In the mustab, in the sunnah, which is encouraged, if you do it, you get plus points. If you don't do it, you get no negative points. Muba is permissible, optional. Whether you do it or you don't do it, there's no negative, there's no positive points. As far as makru is concerned, which is discouraged, if you don't do it, you get positive points. If you do it, you get no negative points. And the last is haram. If you don't do it, you get positive points. If you do it, then you get negative points. If a doctor gives you advice and tells you to do something which is further, it is good. Suppose the doctor tells you, fast for one complete month and it is Ramadan. Either do you have to fast if the doctor tells you or not. So the doctor tells you something which is further. Whether the doctor tells you or not, you have to do it. If the doctor tells you something which is a sunnah or which is mustahab, for example, doctor tells you, sit and drink water. It is good for your health. And you sit and drink water. Whether the doctor tells you or not, it's a sunnah. And the Muslim should do it as far as possible. So there's no problem at all. If doctor tells you something which is muba, which is permissible, optional, no harm. If the doctor is an expert, as long as the doctor is qualified, follow it. Now the basic precaution comes in the last two sections. If the doctor tells you to do something which is makru or something which is haram. If the doctor tells you to do something which is makru, you have to first analyze why is the doctor telling you. And if the doctor is telling you something which is not recommended by the prophet, it is not encouraged, you have to do a research and see whether the doctor is telling correctly and you follow it. Because if you do something which is makru, you don't get negative points. If you don't do it, you get positive points. But the Quran at the same time tells you, first alo ahali zikri in Kuntula Talamun, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, and Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 43, that ask the person who is knowledgeable. So if a doctor who is a knowledgeable person, you have to confirm that he is a good qualified doctor, he is not a quack and not just telling something which is out of the way. There is no harm in doing what the doctor tells you, even though it is makro. If doctor tells you something which is haram, then you have to weigh the pros and cons. That is it something which is life-threatening? For example, if the doctor tells you that take this alcohol, it is the only medicine that will save your life. Having alcohol is haram, but it's the only medicine that can save your life. So what you have to do, you have to do little research. That what the doctor is telling, is it really true? If the doctor is telling you something which is generally haram, anything which is haram, but because your life is in danger, automatically that becomes halal for that time. Like Allah says in the Quran in no less than four different places. In Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 173. In Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 3. In Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 115. And in Surah Anam chapter number 6 verse number 145. That if unwillingly you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah is Rahman or Rahim. After saying, Hurramat alaikumul maitu to what the muwalamul kinzir wama ulla li garilla be, forbidden for you for food, ah, dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which Allah, then Allah's name is taken. These four things are prohibited. But the verse continues, if unwillingly, if you disobey Allah as a requirement, then Allah is Rahman or Rahim, He forgives you. For example, if you go in a boat and there is no food, and you have been out at the sea for several days, and the only food available is pork. Pork is haram. But that time to save your life, 
having pork becomes permitted because it's going to save your life. But the moment you come to shore, pork again becomes prohibited. So similarly, in this situation, the doctor tells you that alcohol is the only medicine that can save you. You have to do research. Is the doctor what he's saying is right? Is there any other alternative? If there is an alternative, for example, the homeopathy medicine contains alcohol. But homeopathy medicine is not the only medicine that can cure you. So if you go out of the way and have homeopathy medicine, it is not Islamic. Because most of the homeopathy medicine contain alcohol. Suppose if you have cough, and if the cough syrup contains alcohol, you should not have that. There are other alternatives. If you are feeling cold and doctor tells you, have alcohol, have beer, beer keeps you warm. Have honey, honey will keep you more warm. So if there is an alternative for the thing requested by the doctor to the alternative, if there is no alternative and that's the only thing that can save your life, so if in the situation of life and death or detrimental point, it becomes permitted for you. Quran has given the permission. If the doctor is telling you something to do which is makru, then do your research and weigh the pros and cons. Is the treatment really required? Ask me something which is against the sunnah. Sunnah will give you blessing. Based on that, if you do something which is makru, it's not a sin at all. It is permitted. In this case, a prophet did tell the Muslims that when you sleep, you sleep on the right side. And today, scientifically, we know that when we sleep on the right side, the right lung is larger than the left lung. If we sleep on the left side, there is pressure of the lungs on the heart. So if we sleep on the right side, it is preferable, it is better scientifically to sleep on the right side. And our Prophet has recommended that. Now in the situation where a lady is pregnant, what happens that the liver is on the right side? So if a lady sleeps on the right side, there is pressure of the liver on the uterus and there is pressure on the baby. So the doctors many a time when required, they recommend the pregnant woman to sleep on the left side so that the pressure of the liver is not there on the uterus and that is beneficial for the baby and increases the blood circulation. So in such cases, when there is a requirement and if the doctor says sleep on your left side, it is not haram at all. It is sunnah to sleep on the right. To sleep on the left side is makru, but it is permitted, especially if it is going to be beneficial for the baby and if it's a requirement, then at that moment at least, till the baby has problem or till you deliver, sleeping on the left side is preferable than to sleep on the right side. We have to weigh the pros and cons and then take the decision. Hope that answers the question.